All right, questions from September 7th service for from 717. Uh, we didn't have any from Sunday morning, uh, other than a good suggestion again for the name of the 717 service. So, uh, or, or the change of verse from Psalm 717 to John 647. I think that's where we're headed with that. A uh, couple of questions from 717. First of all, does God test us or do trials come from our own free will or from a fallen world? The answer is yes, uh, all of those. There's all kinds of reasons why trials come. The Bible specifically tells us why some trials come. Sometimes trials come at the hands of evil people. Uh, people do evil things. We see evil all around us today. There's persecution of the church around the world. There's places around the world where the church has been at times the abuser. Um, there are abuse by people in power and government or military. There are people by, uh, that abuse in power in private industry. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons why evil come, uh, why evil comes and trials come. One of the reasons is that there's evil people in the world who do evil things. Another reason is that we just live in a fallen, broken world and bad things just happen. Uh, car accidents happen and they happen because God doesn't exempt either Christians or non-Christians from ever experiencing trouble. I sometimes ask people when a trial comes that involves something like a car accident and they say, why did God let this happen? I always ask them, what freedoms are you willing to give up so that you never have anything bad happen in your life? Uh, does that mean God would ban you from walking, driving, running? Uh, God would ban you from ever getting on a ladder. Uh, God would ban, uh, w gra gravity wouldn't be in play. Uh, you know, what kinds of things, what, how would we alter the universe so that natural occurrences of trouble wouldn't occur? And the answer is that in a fallen world, God doesn't suddenly give Christians an exemption from trouble. So uh, sometimes things just happen, trouble comes. Now again, obviously God's sovereign and he allows those things to occur, but he says that he causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. And I think from that we get that God doesn't exempt either believers or unbelievers from trouble or good things. They both get good experiences as this life unfolds and sometimes bad experiences. Um, and so you get things like storms that are bad or a drought and you go, well, why did God send the drought there? Well, maybe that God allows the natural occurrences of weather patterns in a fallen world to impact people as it unfolds. And so um, I think that's some of it. Another reason why trials come is sometimes God is specifically testing us. You saw it in the life of Job. You saw it in the life of Paul with the thorn in the flesh. Three times Paul asked God to remove that from him. God said, no, my grace is sufficient. I want to leave that there. Um, so sometimes within the uh, within the issues of trials, you have God bringing the trials on purpose to accomplish something specific in a person's life. Sometimes trials come because we're just sinners. We do bad things. We make horrific choices ourselves. Uh, sometimes God allows those out of natural consequences. You have an individual who uh, is maybe using illicit drugs and it causes damage to them. They are a believer in Jesus Christ, but God doesn't exempt them from the fact that they abuse their body. And so trials come sometimes because of our own, con uh, our own choices. Trials can't even come because we do evil. Remember that Simon Peter said, hey, uh, if you're gonna suffer in this world, suffer because you're following Christ, not because you're an evil doer. If you suffer because you're an evil doer, you've earned nothing from that. There's no divine benefit to that. You're just suffering the consequences of bad behavior. And so with that, I think uh, sometimes trouble comes because of our own choices. Sometimes trouble comes so that we can minister to other people. I've seen this before, where an individual will go through a very difficult time, cancer, the loss of a spouse, the loss of a child, and then see them be able to minister to a much weaker person in terms of their faith, or a much uh, weaker person in terms of their own mental, emotional stability, and be able to come alongside them. And so sometimes I've seen what I think maybe God allowing troubles to come into a person's life with the intent of equipping them to minister to other people. And then, of course, there's a combination of all those can be used simultaneously. Since God is sovereign, he's not limited to, to one idea. And since the world has fallen, there's a lot of different reasons why trouble can come. And so out of all of those, uh, there's a lot of reasons why trials come. Uh, God is sovereign, but he also, from what I can tell from the scripture, allows trouble to occur because people make evil decisions or because we're in a fallen world. 
but he also doesn't waste a trial. And for people who will humbly walk with him, I think God uses all kinds of trials, various trials, as James calls them in chapter one of, James, of the book of James, various trials to produce character in us, to give us a sense of endurance and strength, to give us a sense of hope, as Paul says in Romans chapter five, uh, that these things produce in us something that's positive because God's training us. I liken it to a coach of a basketball team who sometimes will cause the team to run just because he wants to get them in shape. Sometimes will cause the team to run because uh, they did poorly in the game before and appeared sloppy and out of shape and lack discipline. Sometimes will cause them to run because of a specific off-court indiscretion by a player. He didn't turn his homework in. We all get to run. That happened to me when I was a basketball player. You hate that kind of thing, but it's the kind of thing that brings discipline to the entire team as a whole. And so troubles will come into the church, into a person's life, but the whole church is impacted by that. And we all walk through that trial together as a church. And so when those kinds of things happen, there's a lot of reasons why God would allow trials to come. All right, the next question is one I ask myself all the time. How can we make MRBC more diverse? Well, um, this is a challenging thing. They often say the most segregated hour in America today is Sunday morning from 11 to 12. Um, Matthew Road is not as diverse as it needs to be. We have some diversity. We have, uh, well, six of our, five or six of our deacons are uh, Hispanic by background or Latino by background. And so that's really good. Uh, we have several bilingual people in the church too, which has been great for ministry. We've been able to do some really cool ministry and missions uh, between the Moreno family and the De La Torre family and the Aldape family and the Ontiveros family and other families like them that have been able to do some ministry related things because of their gifting, their cross-cultural understandings, uh, linguistic gifting. We have uh, some African-American or black families within the church as well, uh, but we are still uh, predominantly white and uh, that needs to get better and better as time goes by. That's a great question. There's some things we can do specifically and there are some things that we actually do do in order to uh, try to encourage diversity on the stage. Uh, you'll see that sometimes with uh, some of the selections we use of people who are very gracious and gifted uh, and try to put them in leadership roles because they are so gifted and gracious and it does give better contours to the church and lets the church look more like the community we're serving in. But it is an area where we need to continue to strive and work at. So I appreciate the question. It's a good honest question and it's one we need to constantly be vigilant about. We want the church both in uh, ethnicity, gender, uh, age, uh, stages in life to be as diverse and look as much like the the neighborhood we live in and the, the surrounding area we live in as we possibly can. We have some of that, but there's more work to do. And so thank you for the question. We will continue to press that as uh, we go forward. All right, those are the questions from uh, 717. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you Sunday night.